Hello everyone and welcome back. I'm Alvin of Alvin Inc. and today we're just taking it easy and we're gonna have a little let's play. Uh, my plans are to just talk a little bit about <laughs> what Animal Crossing has been for me over the year of 2020 and while I'm doing that I'm just gonna clean up my island a little bit. It is completely under construction. Um, I actually have some really big plans that I'm working on, um, especially some stuff over here. I'll give you like a little sneak peek of some stuff. Uh, so this is, I love this. This is like one of my favorite parts of the island. Um, I am a writer and I wanted to try and combine writing and Animal Crossing together into like one thing. So... I'm going to have a couple videos that will be coming out soon that tell the story of my villagers, but it's a little unconventional and not really Animal Crossing, but it's inspired by Animal Crossing. Um, trust me, it is super, super exciting. Um, but before we get more into that, I think I just wanted to, oh, nope, just showing you that little, that little piece. <laughs> um, and ooh, what are you guys talking about? Um, so I want to talk a little bit about 2020. It's like the big elephant in the room that no one really wants to talk about, but we all know it's there. And I started 2020 in Vietnam. I was working as an English teacher and I remember when COVID-19 kind of first exploded and became a thing, uh, the schools in Vietnam shut down very quickly. And at that point, I didn't have a lot of friends because I'd only been there for about six, six or seven months, I think. Um, and I was living with my sister, so that was nice, but um, I just didn't really have a lot of like connection in Vietnam. So when we went into shutdown, it was really difficult. I think it was difficult for pretty much everybody. The, the stress and the difficulty of not being able to see your friends and family and just the people you love in your life. Um, it was really hard. And the few friends that I did have, um, you know, I would go out and meet with them for coffee and everything before COVID. And then COVID happened and there would be days where I would just, like, <laughs> I ended up, I moved into a studio apartment, which was my first apartment that I owned or rented by myself. And I was there for an entire month and the month that I was there um, I didn't really have anyone I none of my friends wanted to see me uh, because of COVID and everyone was really worried because uh, you know no one knew what was going on and that was fine I understood that but it was still difficult being in you know another country where I, ever, I only have so few friends I didn't really speak the language. I didn't speak the language. It's not that I didn't really, I just flat out did not speak the language. Um, but I had learned a few words and I was trying, but just didn't work out in the time frame. And it was weird being alone. And I just remember being in my apartment and it would be like, I would look up at the, at the, not, I was going to say at the clock on the wall. There was no clock on the wall. It's my cell phone clock. Let's, who am I kidding? Um, but I would look at the, the my cell phone clock and, oh, darn it, shovel. And it would be four o'clock in the morning. And I'm like, I literally, I felt like, I would feel like I had just woken up. And I'm like, how did the day go by? And it was four o'clock in the morning and the, I spent the entire day playing Animal Crossing. And I spent a lot of full days playing Animal Crossing, especially in the beginning. I remember, oh my gosh, when Animal Crossing first came out, I went on Grab, which is like the Uber of Vietnam. And instead of having cars, they drive you around on motorbikes. So I was on the back of a motorbike going to like four different uh, game stores. Cause I was like, I have to get Animal Crossing. Cause I tried Animal Crossing New Leaf a little bit when that one came out and then I just kind of lost touch of it a little bit and with New Horizons 
I don't know, something, I was just obsessed with it. I really wanted to, to play the game. And I'm normally a huge Pokemon fan, and I'm still a huge Pokemon fan. But I was not impressed with Sword and Shield at all. Um, and I was just kind of disappointed with all of that. So I felt like, you know what? I'm going to betray Pokemon and focus on Animal Crossing instead. So I went on the back of this, of this motorbike uh, to four different game stores trying to find this game. And all of them were like, oh, we get all of our shipments from other countries and they didn't have a copy of the game yet. And I was like, okay. And I know that there's always the option of um, downloading the game, which is what I ended up doing, but I am i don't know what it is. I'm one of those people who, I prefer to have the cartridge. I don't like the idea of just having something downloaded because like, I, I don't understand technology. I don't know what's happening. If I don't have like something I can physically hold in my hands, then it doesn't exist. So I ended up getting the cartridge or the um, downloading the game and that was fine. The problem I had with that is when I came back from Vietnam and I was flying and for some reason I couldn't play Animal Crossing um, online unless I had Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi at airports and on airplanes is not, at least for myself, I don't know how to make it work so it's never consistent. Um, what is buried here? Um, I don't even know what that is. And so it was just, it was, that was a difficult time. And I ended up buying the cartridge as soon as I got back to the States. And I was like, yay, I can finally buy one. Um, but yeah, it was just, I, it's weird. I forget how much like Animal Crossing really did for me and how it and impacted my mental health in like so many amazing ways. I think that every time that I would catch myself kind of falling into a dark place where I was just sad and um, feeling really anxious, I had a, so much anxiety um, in 2020 because I just, I didn't know what to expect. And so when I would be overwhelmed with anxiety or nerves or like paranoia about what's going on in the world i would just go to animal crossing and like i said i would literally spend all day just sitting on my little bed and playing and the thing that i love about animal crossing is that it does give you kind of a sense of connection with the villagers though i do wish that the dialogue options would be a little bit more engaging um but honestly for me the biggest thing with animal crossing is the the creation aspect like like this like literally this is not even one of my best builds by any means but i did this like i made this <laughs> and it took me like maybe an hour hour and a half and i made something that i think looks really beautiful and fun and that was something that i didn't realize how much like being able to to create something, how that can really impact um, like my my mood. Like it was it was crazy. I would be so angry or nervous or stressed or like any bad emotion, and then I would just turn on Animal Crossing and I'd play for an hour or two or three or four or ten, and there was still this like level of frustration and like a little bit of stress because you know nothing always nothing works exactly how you want it to so i'm playing the game and the terraforming doesn't work out right or i don't know just small details wouldn't be exactly how i'd want them so i'd still get a little frustrated but it was the kind of frustration that was like i don't know it just made me feel more human <laughs> if that makes any sense whereas like when I wasn't playing Animal Crossing, the anger and the frustration and the confusion, it just made me feel like like some shell of my former self in some way. Um, and I, oh my gosh, I remember during the month where I, I was in Vietnam and I was just alone in isolation in my apartment, there were times where like, if I wasn't playing Animal Crossing, I would just be staring at the ceiling I would just be laying down and staring at the ceiling and like time it meant nothing to me i was like i could not be bothered 
with everything that was going on and with like the craziness happening in my head and like I know I've said this so much I'm just rambling at this point that's really what this video is about so hope I, if you're still with me like hi thank you so much for still being with me um, there's really no purpose to this video other than just rambling and Animal Crossing um, and I forget what I'm talking about all the time so I'm probably coming across very scatterbrained and I apologize for that because I like to come across and I love conversations that are like very linear and crisp and clear and this is not that at all um, but I'm okay with that I'm having a good time I am looking for items that I can sell that's what I'm doing here because my storage is full because I'm broke um, but that's actually one of the things going back into Animal Crossing that I really enjoy about the game is that there's some kind of cool little lessons that you can learn um, like they teach you about the stock market a little bit where you have to kind of um, practice gambling and, and learning a little bit about chance and I love and I, I respect if you do not time travel like I respect you like mad mad respect because like that's I think one of the big things about this game is that it's supposed to help you like work on achieving a better sense of patience with yourself and with life and things that you do and I and if you're a time time traveler you would know this there's like no patience at all that I have for this game I'm like let's get this going exactly right now exactly how I want it and if you don't do it I'm gonna be upset I have no patience at all um, for what's going on in the game and I should probably practice that I think that um, working on patience is a really important thing because it, it, it has so many benefits in like so many parts of life. I remember um, before I moved to Vietnam, I was actually working at a boys behavioral group home and that was really exciting. Um, I worked with kids that were uh, between the ages of 13 and 17 and I learned so much from that experience. Um, and I loved working with the kiddos. They were so sweet. It was, it was interesting because I, I remember there was a time I was thrown through a door at one point. I was like driving late at night and I had a kid try to like strangle me from the back seat and like all these really like dark, stressful things that pop up when I think like hard about my experience there. But I also had so many experiences where like we kind of had like a little breakthrough in a sense with the kids and I wouldn't say like like really a breakthrough but it was one of those situations where um, I was able to talk with one of the kids and just like be there for them to let them cry like that was one thing I had this one kid that I worked with who I feel like he, he I don't I don't think he's ever really cried much in his life. Like, I remember there was one night I sat there with him after he had gotten off the phone with his social worker because there was some issue with the court and his family. And he just looked at me and we talked for a little bit and he just broke down, like just a complete sob fest broke down. And he was so embarrassed and I was just, I was so confused and I talked with him about that. And I was like, what is, like, why is this embarrassing? Like, this is an amazing thing that you're feeling these feelings, like that you're letting this stuff out. And cause he's one of those kids who, when he was angry or upset, he would just like smash things. He would break things. And at this point he wasn't breaking anything. He was just angry and tense and crying and it was such an amazing experience to like see him in that place of like being vulnerable. I think that being present with somebody while you're feeling all of those kinds of emotions is so powerful and so much more meaningful than like showing strength and punching a hole in the wall. Like that's, that's not strength and how I see it, I think of, th of strength as like learning how to manage your emotions and how to regulate, um, regulate your emotions and manage your behavior. 
Like if you can get to that point where you can just sit with your anger and sit with um, the negative emotions that you have and acknowledge them and like talk about them, work through them, do all of that, like that can be so helpful. Um, and that's, that's really the, at least for me, how I would always recommend handling emotions and handling situations because if you can talk to someone about what you're experiencing and put it into words or like draw, like I had a couple of kids who were huge drawers and they would just draw like whatever they were feeling. I remember we had this one kid and to, completely off Animal Crossing right now, I'm sorry, I'll get back to that in a moment. Um, <laughs> but I had this one kid who, um, he had just arrived at the group home and we were doing dialectical behavioral therapy and for, I think it was the warm up, um, we were supposed to do a mindfulness drawing. And the point of that is where you just kind of, oh, I can't remember. I think it's like you just draw what comes to your mind or you, oh, it was, um, you're supposed to draw something that makes you happy. I'm supposed to be breaking stuff down. Um, so you're supposed to draw something that makes you happy. And he looked at me and he was like, well, uh, what makes me happy is drugs. And I was like, okay, so then draw pictures of drugs. And he was like, wait, I can do that? I was like, yeah, like it, it, the, the assignment is to, or not the assignment, but like the, the task is to draw something that makes you happy. And if drugs make you happy, draw drugs. Like that, that's okay, that's part of this process. <laughs> And he was just so flabbergasted because he'd never had that, like, permission to freely and openly express that part of himself and that, that you know, the, those, those feelings that he has around um, his drug usage and his past. And that was a really, like, groundbreaking breakthrough moment, I felt, um, just talking with him about that and, like, like him just actually drawing drugs i was like that's this is so cool like it, it's not cool that he's draw, drawing drugs and into drugs it was so cool that he was like so quick to be open and vulnerable like most of the kids that i worked with they would not even have sp spoken about that or they would never have like even thought to talk about drugs to a counselor um, or a residential youth counselor at all and this kid is his like second or third day and he's already sharing with me like his experiences and his past and he's talking to me about things that he's gone through and i'm like this is amazing like this is um this is good that you're at a place where you're able to be vulnerable and honest with people um and so getting off my little soapbox i just think that it's amazing when you can be honest and genuine with people um, and cry and just be a human being with another human being. I think that's literally the most profound experience that we can have. Um, but anywho, so here I am <laughs> breaking down my little um, sunken waterfall. I actually did a tutorial for this, uh, I think a week or two ago. And it was really fun to make. It took me like three days because I could not figure out how to get everything exactly how I wanted it. The one thing that I will say with Animal Crossing that I realized about myself is I am, I have tendencies of a perfectionist, I think, where I just, I get sucked into what I'm making and I have this vision in my mind of what it has to look like. Like this is the perfect design. And when I can't get it quite right, I just, I, I can't let go of it. I just keep focused on it and I just have to keep hammering away. And it took me three days to make this. <laughs> And it was just for one video. I'm not actually leaving this on my island. I'm gonna do another sunken waterfall later on. Um, but this is this is way too big. I don't know what I was thinking when I made this. This is like, this is huge. I should have made this smaller, but you know what? No, I shouldn't have made it smaller. I made it, oops, wrong button. Um, <laughs> I made it exactly how it was supposed to be for the experience, but I love this view. Like. Even though I've cleaned up some of it, I do love this view. I think it's so cute. Uh, 
literally I did all of this and it's like this tiny little waterfall is like all you see. That's hilarious. All right, let's go put these plants away. So yeah, anywho, perfectionism. Um, that was something that I experienced with this game is that like even with like the videos that I make, I will spend so much time on these videos and on the footage and I'll re-record and I'll redo the audio and I'll like argue with myself like, oh, I don't need a script. And then I just wing it and then I can't stand whatever I make or whatever I say. So then I'm like, oh, okay, I have to like script everything out and write everything out in this really pretty and neat little way. And I'm like, oh, here's a joke. And then I realize I'm not like... I'm, I, I'm a funny person. Like, I'm going to acknowledge that. Like, I think, I firmly believe that I'm a funny person, but I'm funny by circumstance. Like, I'm not funny because I'm like, oh, haha, -ha, I can tell you a well-orchestrated joke um, that is thought out ahead of time. No, I am not the kind of person who can do that. I am funny in the sense that, like, I just say random things that happen to sometimes be funny, and people will laugh. And that was, like, it makes me happy. I'm like, yay, I want to make you happy and I want to make you laugh. But if I try to like be intentional with jokes, I don't think it always works. Um, I have a couple of videos where I watched back after I uploaded them and I'm like, I cringe at some parts because I'm like, what are you doing? Like, Alvin, what are you doing? What do you think you're trying to accomplish with this? Because you are not accomplishing it. But it's all part of the experience, right? And I am learning and growing and having a good time. But yeah, that's actually something I, w I really want to understand um, for all of you. Like, what is something that like Animal Crossing has shown you about yourself? Like, and maybe there's nothing, like maybe you are like all knowing of yourself and there was nothing new you discovered with Animal Crossing and that's totally fine. But for myself, like I never realized, like I said, that I have this tendency to try and make something perfect. And I think it was honestly enhanced with 2020 and I just, I felt like I had no control over anything. So I was like, here, I have control over this. I can do this. Um, but yeah, let me know. like. What did you learn about yourself through this game? And um, did you connect with anything? Did you connect with yourself on a different level? Did you connect with new people in the community? Um, just like fill the comments with all of the amazing happy things and experiences that you've had with Animal Crossing because like, Lord, we all know we all need, we all need positive vibes, positive energy. Um, and I'm gonna, like, I think the last thing I'm gonna note, because this video is getting kind of long and I've done, like, hardly any progress on tearing down this build. Um, the last thing that I want to note, if I can remember, because now my brain just, like, farted what is happening. Um, wow, this is awkward. I literally, I was gonna make a point. I was gonna go back on, like, a little soapbox and <laughs> share another perspective, but I'm, like, talking and recording and like trying to figure out where I'm supposed to place all of these things. And my brain is like, I can only do one or two things, dude. Like pick one or two and that's it. Um, oh my gosh. And I really wanted to talk about it and I can't remember now. And that like makes me so sad. Um, I don't know. I'm just going to say I love Animal Crossing. I love making videos. I hope that you enjoy my videos. This is, like, this is such a random video. There is really no point to this at all. I just rambled. Um, this is a little inside to me and my brain and how I function. Um, nothing makes sense, but at the same time, everything makes sense, which is kind of weird. Um, and yeah, just let me know what things you've experienced with Animal Crossing. Um, tell me a little bit about, like, what you love, what you've learned about yourself. And I guess I'll just see you in the next video because I don't really have much else to say. And we're already at like 25 minutes, which again, like if you're still listening, like bravo, like kudos, you are a trooper and I am so grateful. And like you really, all of you mean the world to me. Like when you watch my videos and you like and you subscribe and you comment and you just interact with me a little bit, like 
it just means so much because it's so nice to have people <laughs> to connect to and talk to um, that are passionate about the same things that I am. And like, I, I live for it. I really do. So like, keep interacting with me. It makes me so happy. I hope that you find enjoyment from, you know, me and what I create. And yeah, I guess this will just be it. Let me, um, actually, I think I want to go over to this hammock real quick. And that's when I'll say goodbye. Ha 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 ha. Um, here we go. Hammock, sit down and camera. Whee! Okay, here we are. So I am now sleeping. I am Sleeping Beauty. Um, I am the beauty who sleeps. So again, thank you so much for watching. Uh, thank you for just like joining me for this experience because that's all this video is, is just the Elven experience. Um, I'll see you in the next video with like something that's actually like concrete and has substance to it. And yeah, thank you so much. Remember to like, remember to subscribe and bye.